Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Malley here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for August 2nd, 2022, could on 1130 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including multiple tropical cyclones ongoing in the East Pacific and a look at the latest trends in the Atlantic Basin. Things are starting to ramp up, so let's go and jump straight into everything. Taking a weather across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that it is pretty quiet right now across the basin. That is certainly some good news. No real organized activity, but we do have a few tropical waves coming off the coast of Africa right now. And these will continue moving westward across the tropical Atlantic over the next couple of days. But again, no subsequent development of these waves are expected as we progress forward in time. If we look at the East Pacific Basin, we do have a couple of ongoing systems currently. First of all, we have Tropical Storm Frank. Again, this is now rapidly weakening and probably will become a post-tropical cyclone later this afternoon. We have Tropical Depression Georgia on its last leg of life. And the two other potential areas of development, first of all, this area kind of to the southeast of Georgette here, and this has a 30% chance of development as it generally moves towards the west. And then we also have this other system back here with a medium shot at developing, and this also uh, will be heading generally towards the northwest here. And we'll have to watch this because this does get close to some of the islands out here in the East Pacific and could ultimately come pretty close there. Uh, two portions of the Cabo Verde Island, or not the Cabo Verde Islands, the Cabo San Lucas Resort areas in the Baja Peninsula. So we'll have to watch that very closely. Now across the central United States today, we'd have a couple of problems. First of all, in the heat department, it is going to be a hot one across the central part of the United States today. First of all, we have heat advisories stretching all the way from portions of Texas, all the way through portions of Minnesota. Again, mainly we are expected to see temperatures that could soar into the hundreds across portions of even as far, really as far north almost as Des Moines, Iowa. Some of these uh, heat advisories uh, do include the potential for some heat indexes to reach about 110 degrees today. And all of that heat then is going to translate to a severe weather threat across portions of the northern parts of the United States today. We have a slight risk for severe storms today, generally north of Minneapolis, Minnesota, from about Duluth all the way out to Fargo and portions beyond that. There is a potential risk for some hail and wind today with a very low risk of a tornado threat, so something to kind of keep in mind there. And of course, we have a marginal risk surrounding that from just about Sioux Falls and Omaha all the way through portions of La Crosse and all the way through near Marquette, uh, Wisconsin as well. So looking at the overall tropics here and what we're going to expect over the next couple of weeks, well, let's take a look at the GFS forecast. This is the 60 run valid for 8 a.m. this morning. We noticed that there actually is a tropical wave right now that has emerged off the coast here. This is a pretty dry tropical wave, so there's actually no shower and thunderstorm activity associated with it. We noticed that on the GFS forecast, it is pretty quiet across the basin really for the next several weeks. This goes out to about August 12th. And this is kind of what we were talking about, that the first part of August seems to be relatively quiet for now. And that is certainly some good news. But there is something starting to happen beyond that. So we need to actually take a look at the European forecast. This is the precipital water forecast. So we're looking at the precipital water anomalies. So is there more moisture or less moisture in the atmosphere? And what we're going to see here is that uh, this is the overnight runs here. So we'll bring this out to about current time. This is valid for 2 p.m. this afternoon. We notice that again, here's that moisture plume associated with that tropical wave, not really doing too much right now. And we notice that there is still a lot of dry stable air across most of the main development regions, certainly getting pumped in from this kind of canary current and this big high pressure dome over the North Atlantic, basically just pushing this all the way southward. And this is part of that wave breaking pattern. But we notice that uh, we start to see that begin to change here. This is about August 7th. We actually notice there is more relative moisture in the tropics at this time. And if we move this forward, now we notice what we do get is we still have this wave breaking pattern. We still see this dry air intrusion by August 10th. But notice that after that time, we start to get a buildup of moisture over Africa here. And this will eventually surge out into the Atlantic and things begin to look to change. Now, this isn't still necessarily all that favorable of a look here in the precipital water anomalies. But if we actually take a look here at the ensemble mean sea level pressures at this time, we actually notice 
um, that there actually is a fair amount of convection and potential tropical disturbances that are out here. We actually noticed several of these uh, ensemble patterns here are suggesting that we could have some areas of low pressure or maybe even a tropical cyclone at this time. And one of the other telling things as well that the MSLP anomalies at this time will now be well below average. If we actually kind of take a look at the pattern that we're in now uh, or that we were in, we actually had a period of above average anomalies and that was helping to induce a little bit of an enhanced trade winds. But we continue with this below average and now this actually moves further north as well, allowing the potential for the canary current to actually warm some and the potential that we could stop having these dry air intrusions that come into the Atlantic Basin. Now, one of the interesting things as well is that the European Ensemble forecast this is the EPS control through the next 46 days. So this goes out to about the 16th of September. So actually past our peak here. And we notice what's actually setting up is where the East Pacific Basin looks to be shutting down uh, for the remainder of the season. This goes about through August 1st, or this was from August 1st, which is from yesterday, and downward in time to the 16th. We notice that there generally isn't really much activity, so any really upward moving air in the East Pacific. Maybe a couple of induced Kelvin waves that come across here, maybe sparking some activity from time to time, but not really seeing too much. And the Atlantic Basin seems to be pretty dominated. The Atlantic and Indian Ocean seems to be favored for upward moving air. And that is certainly very favorable. And this is actually kind of resembled even in the GFS control as well. The GFS has certainly started to come around to the European idea, which means we are starting to get a convergence of the models to a more favorable pattern across the Atlantic Basin. Certainly has more upward moving air over Africa and the Indian Ocean. And pretty much we don't really see much activity, especially in the East Pacific, but some Kelvin waves passing through, especially earlier uh, in through August, could spark some activity at that time. This goes out to about August 17th. And then we look at this, and this actually is kind of one of the most interesting things. This is the tropical cyclone strike probabilities uh, over the next couple of weeks here. This goes out to about the 14th of August, so about 288 hours from now. Of course, this is too early to determine uh, what impacts and where things will go, but we notice that there actually is uh, about 30 to 40 percent odds of seeing a tropical cyclone forming uh, in the main development region close to the islands over the next couple of weeks. And there actually is some increasing probability of seeing that actually translate into the main development region as well, or I'm sorry, into the Gulf of Mexico with about a 20 percent chance of development in the Gulf of Mexico through the next 288 hours, so throughout the next couple of weeks to about August 14th. So we'll have to see how this kind of plays out, but this definitely goes to show that our hurricane season is beginning to ramp up, and I certainly would not be surprised to see some activity start to occur in the next couple of weeks. All right, so that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali, and I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.